Coming up on City Spotlight, the focus is on Effingham. We will talk public safety in Effingham with Effingham Mayor Jeff Blumker, Effingham Chief of Police Mike Schutzbach, and Effingham Fire Chief Joe Hollamy. We will discuss staffing for both Effingham Police and Fire Departments and training for emergency situations. And at the end of the show, we'll have a behind the scenes feature on the Effingham Performance Center. That's all next on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com. And welcome to another edition of City Spotlight. Today we are talking about Effingham, and I have a full cast of people here from Effingham with me. We'll start with Mayor Jeff Blumker of Effingham. Great to see you again, Ramin. Very good. We have Chief of Police Mike Schutzbach. Nice to be here. And Fire Chief Joe Hollamy. An honor to be here today. Excellent. Glad you could all come here. And the focus of today's show will be about public safety. And we'll get to you two gentlemen here on, uh, to my left. We'll start with Jeff here with a couple of questions. And Jeff, um, just to kind of follow up to our last episode on City Spotlight on Effingham, uh, we saw firsthand in a, a feature about the uh, new Workman Sports Complex. And I want to get your impressions on how that place has been received in Effingham just a couple months, a couple months into uh, it being around. Yeah, well, as, as you saw firsthand, I mean, it's just a fabulous, fabulous uh, sports complex. And I work out there. I get there every morning at 5.30 and try to do my thing. So I, I, have, a, I have a vested interest in it, certainly. And, and uh, it amazes me at, at 5, 5.30 in the morning, the place is full. Uh, every aspect of it would be the weight rooms or the, the, uh, uh, the, the workout machines, the elliptical machines and so forth. Or even they have a, a spin class going on at that time of day. And it, uh, I'm told it just it carries on like that all day long and so now we're waiting the pool's all done and then we get a lot of people swimming in the pool and, and so we're ready for the competitions to start the um, next next step is they'll start working on the, on the landscaping and getting the, the fields outdoors ready for for soccer programs and uh, there's an all access this is kind of interesting a development there's an all they're they're working on an all access playground for uh, for children or anyone with developmental disabilities uh, who can get uh, the, you know the, the playground equipment equipment's specially made for them. So neat things going on there. It's just a real, real gem for the entire region. And a uh, great location. You can see it off the interstate. Yes, you can. Yep. It's very big as we mentioned. All right, let's talk a little bit since last time you were on, we can always talk a little bit about economic development in Effingham. Uh, what's the latest here as we go into summer? Well, we've we have uh, we were just last uh, week uh, myself and and uh, the uh, the city economic development team were out in Las Vegas at the uh, International Council of Shopping Centers, and this is this is a big big show where you bring together all the the the, the uh, powerful realtors and and uh, big name retailers and big name restaurants all get together, and as a municipality, you go in there and say, okay, which which retailers, which restaurants do we want to uh, have in our town? And Effingham, which makes sense for us, and and so uh, we were out there pitching Effingham, and we we had some good luck. We have can't talk about them right now, but uh, uh, we have uh, a nice big box retail um, uh, that we've been talking about for a while. The, the the agreement on that's about done, and we met with them out there, and it's a they're they're quite eager to get into the Effingham market. And uh, then we just found out uh, about a uh, a nice restaurant that that uh, I think people are going to be really happy about uh, that that will probably be located where we have the Chipotle going on uh, right now. The Chipotle restaurant should be, be done in October. Um, and I've got another another nice restaurant that should be coming in probably this year as well. That, that uh, let's just say the, 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 the female segment and the college segment would be real happy with it. So it'll, it'll be a real nice compliment to what we already have there. All right, and uh, we're right here at the start of uh, summer basically. And uh, means festival season here in Effingham, a lot going on, a lot of events. And I know one thing that you told me about uh, not too recently ago uh, on City Spotlight was the changing of the liquor ordinance will help out a little bit with, with some of those festivals coming up. Yes, that's right. And we just, we just put that to the test, as a matter of fact. 
um, uh, the Artisan Fair. Uh, we just had that a couple of weeks ago. Everything went fine. Um, and in essence, what we did is we changed our liquor ordinance so that it's not quite so restrictive where the, the, the wine tasting or the craft beer tasting was, was in one tent uh, away from the festival across the street. Now it's all mixed in. In this case, uh, uh, it's all part of the event. People can, can enjoy their, their beverages and, and, and even uh, walk around the event. We have the, uh, the Effingham Summer Food Festival coming up here uh, in a few weeks. Uh, that's that's going to be in June. Same type of thing. They're going to be able to uh, uh, enjoy uh, their, the wine tasting or the, the beer tastings and along with the food. We've got the Effingham Jam coming up in August. Uh, big deal. I mean, obviously beer and barbecue go together quite well. And so this is going to, we hopefully will bring a new dynamic to that event. Um, and uh, then we uh, there's some people putting together a craft beer festival uh, in October. Uh, we've got a bluegrass festival there in Effingham, and I believe that's in September, if I'm not mistaken, um, at, at uh, Tuscan Hills Winery. So uh, um, we're able to put this, uh, it, it's so far so good. And a lot of that's just good planning. Chief uh, Schutzbach signs off on every plan. There's security in place at each one so that, uh, you know, and, and we, we, uh, we work with the security teams up front and say if anything starts to look out of line, let's get them out of there. And, and we didn't even have to do that with the Artisan Festival. I mean, there were no problems whatsoever, so it's working well. All right, very good, thank you, Jeff. And now I'm gonna bring in these two gentlemen here that uh, kind of help out with public safety in Effingham, police and fire departments. And I'm gonna kind of ask you some general questions about your respective departments, personnel, and your facilities. And then I got some questions that kind of both of you can answer together. So we'll start with Mike here, and you're the Chief of Police. Mike, how long have you been in Effingham? I've been with the police department for a little over 30 years now. Okay, very good. And uh, talk about the dynamics of your department. How many officers do you currently have? Uh, we currently have 22 full-time police officers. Uh, we are a full-service police agency. Uh, we take care of, obviously, the patrol, investigations, follow-up. We have a drug uh, unit. We have canine unit. We also have uh, uh, a member of the SWAT team locally. And uh, we are one in, the, one in our area that has, uh, that has uh, perfected the uh, computer crimes investigation section. Okay, very good. And I understand that uh, uh, four new officers will be added on here that will become official members of the police department come September? The mayor and the city council ha they have voted to allow us to increase our staffing by four officers, yes sir. Okay, and how will that improve the dynamic of your force? We currently, uh, we're doing a, a little stacking of calls which takes us a little lo bit longer to get from for a call for service. So this uh, should free up the officers. Uh, we have very little unobligated time. Uh, we're hoping with the addition uh, will get us, get us to the calls for service a little bit quicker. And your current police department is located at what location in Effingham? We're right behind City Hall at 206 East Section. Okay. I'm going to bring Jeff back in here for a quick question, Jeff. And I understand you told me before these two gentlemen joined you uh, that uh, there's uh, an idea of a new police station uh, in the works, possibly. Yes, yes. That's just hit the radar. Um, you know, th this all kind of ties into it. Uh, bless Chief Schutzbach's heart. He's been kind of doing without for, for five or six or seven years, uh, maybe more than that. Um, they, they lost some officers due to early retirement back in like 2003, 2004. And uh, the chief said, hey, let's, let's, we'll try to, and the city council at the time said, let's see how long we can go and see, verify the need, so to speak. Um, and so they, they've, they've done that in our minds. So that's where the, the four new officers are coming from. It's time to, to get them fully staffed again. But I, one of the things uh, when I became mayor, um, at, right after the election, uh, city staff and our city administrator, Jim Arndt, does a good job of orienting uh, and, tr and, and going through a training session for all the new councilmen and the mayor. And um, it was really one of the first times that I've had a tour of our our current police station, which has been there how long, Chief? How long is our current police station? Uh, we've been there about 35 years yeah. uh, or so. Uh, prior to that, it was a Kroger's building. Yeah, correct converted grocery store. So I walked in and, and I, I, don't, I don't know anything about running a police department or, or, or the dyna or, or the way of uh, the architecture of a police station, but, but you could see right away that some things just weren't right here. There's no, they're just, they're, they're, they're safety issues and just, uh, they were cramped and, and just, it was just very antiquated. And quite frankly, it's just, it, for me as a mayor trying to sell Effingham, it was a little bit of an embarrassment. And I said, we've got to fix this. We've got to fix, we've got to address this. And unfortunately, we have several other members of the city staff 
staff and the city council that agree. So we've we've put it on the on the radar here, and it's we've brought in an architect to do some initial work. He's worked with Chief Mike and and uh, uh, Jim Art, the city administrator, and they've got some nice plans and ideas, and hopefully we're going to be able to bring it to fruition here in the next few years. And, and obviously, Mike, uh, it come uh, happening and something like that would be. A, a major asset to not only your force, but to the city of Effingham. Absolutely. The, the biggest problem that we see now is the co-mingling of the staff, the officers and the lay staff. And then when you throw in the mix of uh, suspects and victims, all within the same very tight corridors, it, it makes it difficult for, for the officers involved and the citizens that are, that are working with us to try to rectify the uh, criminal problem. All right, very good. Thank you, Mike and Jeff. Joe? Uh, bring you into the conversation and uh, how long have you been uh, with the Effingham Fire Department? Uh, I've been in the fire service 40 years this year. Uh, I've been chief of Effingham for about 11. Okay, very good. And uh, uh, I talked to you a little bit about uh, some things beforehand and uh, what brought you to Effingham? Uh, actually at the time, in back in 2004, the uh, chief at that time and the assistant chief were both retiring at the same time. The council at that time wanted to take the fire department in a different direction, so they hired a consulting group and subsequently I applied under that process and uh, was offered a job back in uh, October of 2004. Okay, very good. And I uh, understand there's multiple fire stations in Effingham. Uh, where, how many do you have and where are they located? Uh, we currently have two stations. Uh, ironically, it's Station 1 and Station 3. Okay. Uh, station 1 was built in 2004 and took the place of two fire stations at that time. Um, and then Station 3 is at the far south end of the city, um, and that was built in 1975 and covers a, a southern portion of, of the jurisdiction. Okay, very good. And uh, talk about the dynamics of how many uh, firefighters you have. In we your have department. 15 full-time firefighters. We're a accommodation department. Um, so we have five on per shift, a 24-hour shift. And then we have 20 paid on call that are all state-certified firefighters, and they subsequently get called in based upon the specific call and the need. Okay, and uh, we talk a lot with Jeff here on this program about economic development and uh, new buildings, new businesses coming or, or businesses moving into old buildings. Something you told me about was inspecting, inspecting new and old buildings. We currently have uh, just over 1,100 businesses that we have to inspect. This includes everything from hotels to hospitals to the jail, uh, the county seat we have to take care of the courthouse and, and so forth. Um, we try to inspect those buildings on a, on a regular basis. Uh, we also work with the business owners in some of their safety plans and some of the safety aspects of their facilities. Uh, we offer uh, to those same businesses different safety programs, including a fire extinguisher program. So we go on site and we instruct people how to utilize a fire extinguisher. We try to take more of a proactive um, aspect, uh, not trying to put ourselves out of business by any means, but certainly we don't want to have any building uh, sustain damage or loss uh, due to fire and by taking a proactive approach, we've we've cut our, our calls down dramatically in a couple of years. Okay, very good. Now, Mike and Joe, I have a couple of questions that I think you both could probably answer a little bit about, and that's emergency management. And I'm sure you guys probably work together on some of this, fire and police. And talk about um, training for that, um, earthquake drills, train train derailment sequences, mock, mock drills like that. Uh, how often do those things happen and uh, talk about those being an effective way for you guys to train your force? Well, emergency management falls under the fire department. Um, so I have an emergency management coordinator who works part-time. Um, and back around 2006, 2007, Chief Schutzbach and I uh, sat down, we started looking at some of the hazards that existed within the city. And we basically were the driving force collectively to develop an emergency operations plan for the city's worst day. And we looked at different things that could happen in the city, uh, whether it be a train derailment, uh, a tornado, uh, and now earthquake with the fault line being south of the city. And we looked at all those different scenarios that could potentially happen. We developed a manual that had the input of all of our various agencies within the city and some without. And we now have become an accredited agency under the Illinois Emergency Management Agency or the state. And as a result of that, we're able to, um, we're eligible for federal funding for different projects that we've done. We have seven outdoor warning sirens uh, strategically placed throughout the city. We have a reverse notification system in place that allows us to call people's homes or cell phones based upon where an incident is. 
and then collectively between our two agencies, the different resources that are available are outlined in the plan based upon what the incident may be, and then we, uh, Chief Schutzbach and I, uh, develop a unified command system where we're both on site, and we don't necessarily look to see who's in charge. We work together collectively on a specific incident. We should also uh, note that we do meet monthly with uh, all of those players uh, that uh, could be involved with us during an emergency. So once a month we meet at the fire department and, uh, and gather uh, ideas and work on our plan to make sure that uh, everybody's up to date. So if it, if it does hit Effingham, uh, not only are the city is taken care of or, or knows what their responsibilities will be, so does the school district, the park district, uh, Salvation Army, Red uh, Cross, uh, AMRA, or the, CIA, the uh, electrical company. Mm -hmm. So we have we have a, all the major players meet monthly to make sure that we are up on our game. And we even go as far as the hospital is is a big player, um, since they are within the corporate city limits. The coroner's office, mm -hmm. uh, as much as we don't right. necessarily want to use them, but. Uh, we've, we've developed within the plan to use school buses to transport people if we had to do a mass evacuation. So we, we've tried to cover as many things as we can and then we've tested it. So this earlier this year we ran uh, a tabletop drill with all the players in the room and we simulated a train derailment of Balkan crude, um, which in and of itself is not that bad, but if it starts getting into the sewer system, starts an explosion or a fire, that can change things. Um, and with that, we had some cars and a school bus that were involved at the crossing where this incident occurred that, that allowed the school district to test out their plan. And then at the end, we critiqued the entire event, and we just recently put out uh, a report to that. And here's some things that we need to look at to maybe strengthen upon. I mean, let me just add something sure. here because this is important. Uh, you know, with, with, with Effingham, we have we have kind of a unique proposition. Uh, we have upwards of any given day 36,000 vehicles coming through our town. Uh, we have some of the most volatile rail cars crisscrossing through Effingham. Oh, Only 88, 88 freight cars a day. There you go. Unbelievable. Uh, so, so from from my seat as the mayor, as I'm trying to sell Effingham, or as the official representative trying to reassure the citizenry that you're safe, uh, we have two great technicians here, as you can tell, who do good planning, uh, get, given our unique circumstances. Either for one of you want to answer about all that traffic that does come through Effingham. There was the dynamic of an ice storm not too long ago that you had to worry about where were those people going to be. That, that seemed to uh, put our plan into play mm -hmm. and it worked very well. It, everything seemed to go smooth. Uh, we had an enormous amount of traffic coming off of the interstate into our community. We ran out of uh, truck space, no no parking for semi trucks, but yet they still were coming off of the off of the interstate uh, into our community. So we put our plan in place. Everything seemed to work fine. We learned from that plan, uh, but all in all, uh, we had very little difficulties. We and again, this was a unified effort mm -hmm. between uh, the chief and I. Um, on an average night, we house about 1,500 semis between the truck stops within the city. That particular night of the ice storm, we had over 5,000 semis that we had to park in various points of the city. We had a lot of stranded motorists that we had to find shelter for. Um, so we, we utilized different facilities that are at our disposal, again, through the plan. Uh, we used city snow plows to create parking lots for us to house not only the semis, but people who were trying to find a place to stay overnight that didn't get stranded on the interstate, just were able to get off. We also had to coordinate with the state police going out to the interstate and getting people and bringing them back into the city because there were a lot of cars that slid off the interstate, they couldn't get out, so we had to coordinate that effort. Um, traffic became an issue. We ran out of fuel for the semis so that trucks that were waiting to get fuel, now that got clogged up and we had a backlog on the interstate. Uh, the police department organized to escort fuel trucks to come into the truck stop so we could get fuel on the semi so that we could get them moved. So there was a lot of things that were going on behind the scenes, but uh, remarkably, we had no injuries um, that resulted as a result of this ice storm. Wow. Uh, we were able to house everyone who came to our doorstep that night. We felt like we did a, we did a fairly, fairly good job. Uh, all the planning that has gone in preparation to an emergency similar to this one, uh, made it far less stressful 
uh, if we would have just uh, jumped in that day and tried to figure out what we should or should not have been doing. Appreciate hearing about public safety in Effingham with Chief of Police Mike Schutzbach, Fire Chief Joe Hollamy. Appreciate your comments. And Jeff, as always, pleasure having you on. Great to be here, Ramin. Excellent. And coming up next here on City Spotlight, we'll have a feature of a behind the scenes at the Effingham Performance Center. But first, let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Effingham. And welcome back to City Spotlight. We're out of the studio and we're in Effingham now at the Effingham Performance Center. And joining me now is Rich Jorn, Executive Director of the Effingham Performance Center. Rich, thanks for coming on City Spotlight. My pleasure. Excellent. And before we, before we talk about the EPC, and we'll reference that as the EPC uh, throughout this segment uh, and what goes on here, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been working here? Well, I have been here since July of 2010, so this will uh, be six years this July. And uh, well, I've uh, I, I've kind of uh, worked all over you in this industry. You work where the job is. Before I was here, I was actually in the touring industry. Uh, so I lived on the bus and, and all that. And um, so uh, this opportunity came up. I actually grew up in St. Louis. So this is the closest I've lived to home since I left for college. So it was a, a nice coming back to my uh, Midwestern people. All right, staying in the Midwest here in yes. Effingham. Very good. And we've talked about the EPC several times on City Spotlight. And uh, for the folks at home that may not be familiar with it and uh, what the, what's the history, can you tell us a little bit about the history? When did they first open the doors here? Sure. Um, back in 2007 was uh, the grand opening here. And uh, it started off as the Rosebud Theater. And it was a for-profit entity. Uh, the people that were involved, the investors, uh, they all gave a lot to uh, have the building built, and, um, but they all lost a lot because along the way, they did the hardest thing possible, and that is to get a building like this built. There are so many communities out there throughout the U.S. that would love to have a place like this, and they just can't get it done. So they're very fortunate. Unfortunately for, the, for their case, um, they were green or new to the industry, and it kind of has, it, it's harder than it looks. Um, so it, it stayed open for about two years, and then um, a not-for-profit was formed with uh, a lot of the investors who all lost money because they wanted it for their community. It wasn't just about getting uh, a return on their investment. It was something nice for their community. And uh, in the city, um, and there's kind of a joint nonprofit city effort to reopen, and at that point it became the Effingham Performance Center, and it was after that is when I was hired. I was originally brought in as the general manager. In your opinion, how has the EPC benefited Effingham and the surrounding communities? Uh, well, uh, what we hope to do is to uh, increase the quality of life of the citizens here. And that's one of the things that Effingham is truly unique. Um, our, our, our mayor, previous mayor, uh, the city council, they really care about the quality of life. It's not just, hey, I live there and there's nothing to do. Um, this is a community that really, they wanna make sure that their citizens have a place to go see quality uh, concerts and performances. They ha want to see other places in town. They're you know quality place to you know to work out or or um, you know enjoy the outdoors or do you know nature walks and all. That. They're very very concerned. So I feel like we're a very important part of that. And you know and there's a little bit of pride to that when you get to say you got to see your favorite artist in your hometown. You didn't have to drive a hundred miles and you know, pay outrageous amounts for parking and, you know, all that. You just, you know, you went and you saw them. I saw um, the pictures of all the past performers that have been here. One of those was the, the late Merle Haggard. Yes. Um, uh, is it, you stop and for a second and take, take think to think about how uh, all these great acts have come through this place in Effingham, Illinois? Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and that's, you know, that's our goal. That's our goal is we want people Every time we announce a show, we want people like, how did they get them? How did they get them to come to Effingham? And we hear that. Um, and the flip side of that is we, wanted, we want to have that reaction where, how did you get this act or that act to come mm -hmm. to Effingham? But we also want to build that relationship of where, hey, I'd, I've never heard of this, but they never do 
bad shows at the EPC. So let's go check it out. Let's mm -hmm. broaden our horizons. Let's see something that we that uh, we may not be familiar with. So that that's really the goal is to, to serve the community with what they already know, but also introduce them to new stuff that I know they're going to love. Richard Dorn, the executive director at the Effingham Performance Center. Thank you for taking the time to be on City Spotlight. It's my pleasure. Come back anytime. And uh, we'll leave you with a little behind the scenes of sights and sounds at the Effingham Performance Center on the day of a performance. Keep going. Jim? I am. Right on. This is Brian, our uh, security guy. Go you in need it. to meet with him about anything? This is a moving light board. This is a standard traditional um, theater board. And then what we'll do is we'll use this theater board to turn them on and off during focus. And then we will um, hook it all into his board and make the show with his board. They uh, they have it already programmed. We're looking back in the back by the uh, production office and stuff. This production boards. This is for all the employees and stage crews to look at. Uh, Stephen Boyd uh, sets the boards so everybody can look at it as they're going through. That's good. Right there. There. Hey. Feels really good to me, so if you're happy, I'm happy. I'm happy. Five up. Up. On up. Keep going. Okay, Paul, it's all yours. We're good. Okay, great. Once Little River Band starts, they can do whatever they want. Did they give you any instruction on that? They're fine with everything in our house rules. Basically. House rules. This is actually, even though we have Foxworth, this is the end of what was in the brochure. So, and there's a lot this year. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been fun. <coughs> All right. See ya. You need one that says donor, so you can take this one. Hey, and you can come in here. How you doing? Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. How are you? You're ready to have a good time. Hey, we're going to have a good time. All right. <laughs> come on in, have your tickets ready to scan. How are you guys tonight? Good. How about you? Good. How are you? I'm good. There you go. And go. <laughs> Hi. We help you. You guys are. Clear the first opening act, we're going to uh, uh, intermission, and then you're going to go to spots for the show, because we'll need three spots up there then, all right? Um, let's go places, everybody places. It's just one side. You good? I guess so. You understand why I did what I did? That's good, that's good. I mean, they bought a ticket. Before we get started, uh, we have a very special treat for, for you tonight. Bill Poss, that means very own Bill Poss to open the show. Bill, come on out here. Give it up for Bill. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.